Hey guys, it's Metacosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our labs playlist. In previous videos, we talked about beta-2 microglobulin, sputum sampling, we talked about uric acid in the blood, and uric acid in the urine. We talked about serum chloride and urine chloride, serum potassium, urine potassium. And we talked about urinalysis, such as urine appearance, urine odor, the pH of the urine, urine leukocyte estrase, urine nitrites, and much more. Today, let's talk about a very important test if you want to diagnose the cause of hypertension. This is the plasma renin activity assay which measures not the level of renin, but the activity of renin. This can also help us distinguish between primary hyperaldosteronism versus secondary hyperaldosteronism. Please watch the videos in this playlist in order. If you have watched my course on renal physiology, I've told you about the functions of the kidney. The kidney regulates water balance, electrolyte balance, acid-base balance, the arterial blood pressure. It excretes waste products and foreign chemicals and toxins. It secretes gazillion things, including dopamine, prostaglandins, bradykinin, EPO, which is erythropoietin, renin, and the active form of vitamin D. Can we consider renin as a hormone? Yes, because it's secreted from the kidney to the bloodstream. Can we consider it as an enzyme? Yes, because it converts angiotensin O gen into angiotensin 1. Also, the kidney has a metabolic function, gluconeogenesis. Some amino acids and some fatty acids can become glucose. These are non-carbohydrate sources, i.e. new sources. When you make glucose from new sources it's called gluconeogenesis if you want to learn about metabolism check out my biochemistry playlist do you recall the constituents of your blood yeah plasma and cells the plasma is made of water and proteins the proteins are albumin and globulin the globulins could be alpha globulins beta globulins or gamma globulins the alpha globulins are divided into alpha 1 and alpha 2 alpha 2 is the angiotensinogen who makes all the globulins the liver so here is the lovely liver making the alpha 2 globulin known as angiotensinogen why would you call it angiotensinogen Ogen because it will generate angiotensin. And why do you call it angiotensin? Angio means vessel. Tense means to constrict. Oh, I'm gonna constrict vessels. And I am protein in nature. I-N means protein that will constrict vessels, i.e. I tend to raise blood pressure. Who converted angiotensin ogen into angiotensin 1? Renin. Where did that come from? From the kidney. Can you be more specific? From the cells that are near the glomerulus, i.e. juxtaglomerular cells, which are part of the juxtaglomerular apparatus. Here is angiotensin 1. By angiotensin converting enzyme, mostly in the lung, will convert angiotensin 1 into angiotensin 2, which has two main functions. Function number one, it's in the name. It's gonna constrict vessels and raise my blood pressure. Function number two, it's gonna knock on the door of the zona glomerulosa of the cortex of your adrenal gland and tell that cortex to secrete aldosterone. What does aldosterone do? Four things. It reabsorbs salt, it reabsorbs water, it excretes potassium, it excretes hydrogen. Why do you want to reabsorb salt and water? Because the whole purpose of renin is to raise your blood pressure. It does this through angiotensin 2, which constricts vessels. It also does this through aldosterone, which reabsorbs salt and water. Because remember that your arterial blood pressure equals cardiac output times total peripheral resistance. When you constrict vessels, you decrease the radius and increase the resistance. When you increase the total peripheral resistance, you tend to increase blood pressure. Moreover, when you reabsorb salt and water, you increase the extracellular fluid volume, which increases the venous return. If there is more input to the heart, there will be more output from the heart, i.e. cardiac output, which will also tend to increase blood pressure. So, renin has one purpose in life, to raise your blood pressure. Therefore, what's the main stimulus for renin release? Low blood pressure. Hypotension will stimulate renin release. How did the kidney know that the blood pressure is low? Because when the blood pressure is low, there will be less blood pressure in the renal artery, 
which means less blood perfusion to the kidney. The kidney has some sensors for pressure, i.e. bearer receptors, and will sense the drop in the blood pressure and will start secreting renin to raise the blood pressure back to normal. This is the renin angiotensin aldosterone system. Speaking of aldosterone, where did it come from? From the zona glomerulosa of the cortex of your adrenal gland. Why do you call it sterone? Because it has a steroid compound. Why do you call it aldo? Because it has an aldehyde group. It's called chemistry. Aldosterone has four functions in life. It reabsorbs salt and water. It excretes potassium and hydrogen. Since sodium, potassium, these are minerals, we call aldosterone a mineralocorticoid. Mineralo, minerals. Corticoid, it comes from the cortex of your adrenal gland. If I have a tumor in the adrenal cortex that secretes too much aldosterone, this is called Kahn syndrome or primary hyperaldosteronism. But if I have a problem in the kidney, let's say a kidney tumor, dishing out too much renin, this renin will increase angiotensin 1, which will increase angiotensin 2, which will increase aldosterone, but this did not start in the adrenal cortex. It started somewhere else. So we call this secondary hyperaldosteronism. How can I tell the difference between primary versus secondary hyperaldosteronism? This is today's video, Plasma Renin Activity Assay. Why do we use it? To distinguish between primary and secondary hyperaldosteronism and to diagnose the cause of hypertension. When we know the cause of the hypertension, it's called secondary hypertension. When we have no idea what causes hypertension, we call it primary hypertension or idiopathic hypertension, which means we are idiots and we cannot figure out the pathology. This is a joke, by the way. One day I've told it to a nephrologist and he actually believed me. Boy, we are in trouble. What's the method? What's the scientific idea behind it? Radioaminoassay. To measure what? The level of renin in the blood? Mm -mm. The activity of renin. How can you measure that? by measuring the rate of conversion of angiotensin to angiotensin 1. The greater the angiotensin 1 you see, the greater the activity of renin. Okay, medicosis, so what stimulates renin release? Since renin has one function in life, which is to raise blood pressure, anything that decreases blood pressure will raise renin, such as volume depletion, hypotension, decreased renal artery perfusion, hemorrhage, burns, congestive heart failure, cirrhotic nephrotic CHF, all of these will lead to decreased renal artery perfusion. What if I'm not eating salt? Well, no salt means you are telling aldosterone to work harder. Who's gonna tell aldosterone to work harder? Angiotensin 2. Where did that come from? Angiotensin 1. Where did that come from? Angiotensin ogen. How do you convert angiotensin ogen into angiotensin 1? Renin. How about hyperkalemia? If renin triggers aldosterone to excrete the potassium, of course hyperkalemia will make renin upset and it will work harder. The upright position. Why? Imagine that I was laying down on my back and suddenly stood up. What's going to happen? Gravity will pull fluid, i.e. blood, downstairs to my ankles, which decreases the blood returning back to the heart. When you decrease the input to the heart, you decrease the output. When you decrease the cardiac output, you decrease blood pressure, which triggers renin. So, in the upright position, renin goes up. Conversely, in the supine position, there is blood all over the place. Blood is not in my ankles. Blood is in my abdomen now. You know who else is in the abdomen? The kidney. So, the kidney is well perfused, which means there is no need to make renin. Also, renin release follows a diurnal variation or a circadian rhythm. More renin release happens early in the morning for many complex reasons, but also don't forget that early in the morning I wake up and I stand up. So yeah, when I've been lying down for eight hours and suddenly stand up, of course, this will decrease the venous return and decrease cardiac output and tell the kidney to make more renin. Next, licorice has aldosterone-like properties. If you are like aldosterone, well, it means we have aldosterone already, there is no need for renin. How can you distinguish between primary and secondary hyperaldosteronism? Think about it. Primary hyperaldosteronism, where did the problem start? It started in the adrenal cortex. The adrenal cortex is making too much aldosterone, so the kidney will say, if we have too much aldosterone already, there is no need for renin, so renin will go down. Conversely, in secondary hyperaldosteronism, the problem started probably in the kidney. The kidney is dishing out too much renin. 
Renin goes up, not down, and aldosterone goes up. So in primary hyperaldosteronism, renin is low, but in secondary, renin is high. If aldo is high and renin is low, we suspect primary hyperaldosteronism or Kahn syndrome. If both are elevated, we suspect secondary hyperaldosteronism, which could be caused by a tumor in the kidney making lots of renin, or it could simply be caused by hypotension. Now let's compare between primary hyperaldosteronism versus secondary hyperaldosteronism. In primary, who started the problem? The adrenal cortex. Maybe it's a tumor or hyperplasia, increasing aldosterone release. Aldosterone will reabsorb salt and water. When you reabsorb salt and reabsorb water, so the numerator is going up, denominator is going up. What do you think is going to happen to the serum sodium concentration? Most of the time it stays the same, which drives many students nuts. They think, oh, I'm reabsorbing more sodium, therefore the serum sodium concentration goes up. But don't forget, you're reabsorbing water too, so you're not increasing the concentration. The concentration will most likely stay the same. What will go up is the volume of your extracellular fluid, which tells the kidney to make less renin because we don't need it anymore. Less renin equals less androgens in one, which means less androgens in two. What else is performed by aldosterone? Excretion of potassium, you develop hypokalemia. Excretion of hydrogen, when the acid is lost, you get alkalosis. Conversely, in secondary hyperaldosteronism, the problem started somewhere else. Maybe I have hypotension. Maybe I have a kidney tumor, secreting too much renin. Renin went up first, then androgens in two, then aldosterone causing all of these problems. To tell the difference, you can measure aldosterone to renin ratio or renin to aldosterone ratio, it's just math, no one cares. In this case, aldosterone is high, renin is low. Numerator is high, denominator is low. The entire ratio is so high, greater than 20. That's how bad the tumor can get. Aldosterone level is 20 times or more higher than renin. Conversely, in secondary hyperaldo, renin is high, aldosterone is high. So if you do the ratio, it's probably normal or slightly decreasing because who started it? Renin. So we expect renin to go up more than aldosterone. This delta will be greater than this delta. So in today's video, we talked about plasma renin activity assay, but that's not the only renin test that you can run. Other tests exist, such as renal vein renin assay, renin stimulation test, as well as captopril test with plasma renin activity. And we shall talk about all of these tests in the upcoming videos in this lab's playlist. Hey, medicosis, does primary hyperaldosteronism cause edema? No. Why not? Because of aldosterone escape phenomenon. To learn more about this, watch my video titled Aldosterone in my Physiology Playlist. After aldosterone has performed its function, who do you think metabolizes it? The liver will break it down into glucuronic acid and others and then send it to the kidney to excrete it and part of it will end up in the stool. That's why if I have liver disease or kidney disease, I can end up with hyperaldosteronism. Would you call this primary or secondary? Secondary hyperaldosteronism since the problem did not originate from your adrenal cortex. To learn more about kidney function, download my renal physiology course. It will teach you about GFR, renal plasma flow, the proximal tubule, the loop of Henle, the distal tubule, etc. Download it today at medicosisperfectsnetis.com. To learn about hypertension that can happen during pregnancy, including chronic hypertension, gestational hypertension, preeclampsia, eclampsia, peripartum cardiomyopathy, acute fatty liver of pregnancy, and much more, download my obstetrics and gynecology high yields course at medicosisperfectsnetis.com. And if you want to learn about some urological tumors and the interesting phenomenon of low implantation of the ureter, download my surgery high yields course. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfect Snatus, where medicine makes perfect sense.